Hello everyone, thank you very much. We've hit 25,000 YouTube subscribers. So that's a, it's an important milestone for my channel. That's one quarter of the way to 100,000. And we can do 100,000. I have complete faith in us. So that's, there's a couple of steps before that and that definitely won't happen overnight or probably even this year. But that is the, that is one of the next milestones. So to celebrate this occasion, what I decided Decided to do was in the community on my YouTube channel, I put a question where I said, okay, what kinds of questions would you like me to answer? Kind of a ask me anything, like I guess originated in Reddit. And these are the questions that the subscribers sent to me. I had six really in all, and I thought all of them were really pretty good questions. So let me go through these and give you my take on each of these. I don't I don't want this to be a particularly long video. I could potentially do an entire video on each of these, but let me just kind of give you some of how I see each of these. Okay, and for each of these questions, I will credit the person that sent me them. This is from somebody named Shadow Bitto on the subscriber list. How do you keep up to date with what is cutting edge in the industry? This is a very important question and not an easy thing. Thing really to do. There's a variety of different ways to do this. The way that I do this is really through Twitter, through social media, really a variety of ways. Twitter and social media is particularly good. If you notice on my Twitter feed, I don't really follow a whole lot of people. Most of the people that I do have on my Twitter feed, mainly because I just don't spend a tremendous amount of time in Twitter, but I follow a lot of AI luminaries and other people, and other people that I just happen to know in some cases. So this is, you can look at my list of people that I'm following. And then I also tune in on certain YouTubers, certain other people in particular. Lex Friedman, who I have up at the top, he's... He has a really, really good video that had just come out. Welcome to 2020. He's a scientist at MIT, and if you look at his videos, he interviews a lot of people that are very good. One video in particular that he had is State of the Art in Deep Learning 2020. I highly recommend it. It will give you a quick up-to-date on some of the newest things going on in technology. Another one of my favorite YouTube channels is Two Minute Papers also helps you stay very much up to date on what is the the latest. I could do a whole video on staying up to date with technology and that might be a good topic for the future. Next question is from Murphy. When and how did you start programming? Do you have any interesting stories? Sure, so I started programming at a relatively young age. I was in early grade school. I started on a Commodore 64. I can tell you the exact year too. It's 1984. How do I know that? Because on the Commodore 64, as you can see here, you can access screen locations. The top left screen location that I would have to poke a value into, just like GW Basic or Basic A or any of the basics of that time. 1024 would put something at the very top of the screen, top left. And I also needed to memorize that location for the bottom left. And that was 1984. And I remember, remember, that wow it's the current year so started out early and probably my most interesting story from when I first got into programming a number of years after I got the Commodore 64 I'd moved on to to PCs but in high school got to compete in a programming competition and took second place I think with our team and we got to tour Argonne National Research Laboratory and see some very interesting things a Cray supercomputer and some of the stuff from the Manhattan Project. And then computer scientist, data scientist, just a natural sort of progression. Okay, the next question is from Charles Lockhart. What is the best career advice you could give someone who is just starting right out of college or has only a few years of professional experience? Definitely get some internships while you're in college. I work with interns coming into my company 
all the time, and I've, I've seen that to be very useful for their career. You get to talk to people who have been doing this for a number of years and get an idea of if it is something useful to you or not. The other is tinker, tinker, tinker. Ex learn new technologies. Work with code. Just do things that you're interested in to learn the technologies. I was originally in IT, and I got into data science mainly because I was playing around with AI. I never really thought I would have a career related to AI, but then all of a sudden I see it start to come on, and I realize, oh, okay, the thing that I have been playing with for the last five years is actually coming onto the main stage in about six, six years or so ago, I moved from software engineering into data science. And I was able to do that mainly because I published things on GitHub, I had written articles on it, and I even stayed with the same employer. My employer saw that I was doing all this neat stuff with data science and I was able to move over. So remember, GitHub and other things, that counts for experience, or at least that counts to me when I am interviewing people. Bianca, who also has a YouTube channel related to data science that you see here. What are your hopes for deep learning and machine learning? This is actually a shortened form of the question that she asked me or posted in the community forum. Bianca is also a fan of Lex Friedman, and some of my hopes are somewhat similar to his. I'll tie in on my most basic one. One of the biggest limitations of neural networks and all AI at this point is it fundamentally cannot reason. Reason and common sense reasoning are two very closely related things that researchers are trying to tackle. You can ask a computer what is, who is the president of the United States, and it'll tell you. But if you phrase the question more along the lines of what is the oldest democratic president to ever have a vice president who was not a lawyer? No idea who that would be. But I could sit there and figure it out, whereas the computers are going more to try to figure out um, almost a Jeopardy-style question. And if you also look, too, when they learn from data, they're not necessarily learning the math underneath it. If you give a computer a whole bunch of examples of how to multiply two numbers and expect that it's going to learn the actual multiply operator, as soon as you give it two numbers outside of that range, you'll realize it didn't actually learn to multiply. So they do fantastic things now with deep learning, but at the core, how much is it really learning? How much can it really reason? And I think that is one of the areas that deep learning needs to take some further steps to really converge to the singularity. Jacob Shulkin, what are recent developments in AI that have you the most excited? Furthermore, do you think there is anything promising on the horizon in helping to dis demystify more precisely how neural networks are learning and what makes them less of a black box? So I work in the insurance and finance industry, so making the neural network less of a black box is really important to us because we need to potentially explain why we decided to deny somebody insurance coverage or not pay a claim or something like that. Underwriters and claims adjusters and, and others, they can, they can sit there and explain why they made that decision that they did. It's a lot more difficult to say, well, we did this because the model reported a score that was below our threshold for acceptance. That, that just won't fly with legislators and regulators. So, very important to us. I'm most interested in some of the platform agnostic or model agnostic ways of explaining what the model is doing, where they basically look at the outputs and sort of revert, not really reverse engineer, but build an idea of how that model is actually working. Because I think going at the actual weights of the neural network is not necessarily going to help with that. Also, the other thing too, I can't say that humans are also completely explainable either. So this is a bit of a double standard. If I make a particular decision or my wife makes a particular decision and one of the others asks why, uh, I don't know, I just I just wanted to. Or it's it, it can be difficult to explain human decision processing as well. Now, as far as technologies that really interest me, brand new technologies, this one just came out. Facebook has a neural network that can do advanced math. 
I've always been amazed, kind of not amazed, by how extremely mathematical constructs like neural networks are so bad at actually doing math. So this, to me, looks very interesting. Basically, they're reformulating the formulas in such a way so that it's a language that the neural networks can actually deal with. I have not gone very deep on this particular technology that was really just introduced last month, but this is, this is next on my area of new technologies that I really want to start to take a look at. Because this also deals with computational reasoning, which is one of the weaknesses of modern AI. And that's the end of the questions. If you have any other questions that you'd like me to maybe think about or answer in the comments, just post them below. But thank you very much. It's awesome that we've hit 25,000 subscribers and I plan to keep on going. Next goal, I guess, is 50K. So let's, let's see when we get there. Thank you very much, and if you're not a subscriber already, subscribe to the channel and push me towards that goal. Thank you very much.